What up? Day three in Paris. And it is Ben. And this is Noah. And we are on Du Point Neuf, which means new bridge in French. It's a very legendary place. And a very luxurious place, but my French didn't really make it sound that way. But anyway. Uh, it's all good though. So happening right now is the Louis Vuitton show. And just in a few moments, we're gonna check out what everybody has to say about it. Yes, it's going on right now. You can't hear the violins, we can hear the violins. It sounds incredible. Romantic, right? Very romantic. Very romantic, I feel. So yeah, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get some first takes. Yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, so we are here with High Snobiety's own fashion editor at large, Corey Stokes. What's going on? What's up, man? How are you? Good to see you out yeah, in Paris. Man. So what'd you think of the show? Um, wow, it was really impressive, like really, really beautiful. I think that what, it's his third season, and I think here we were finally starting to see him kind of hit his stride. You know, I think it's always nice that he's like keeping these same silhouettes and these familiar, you know, items throughout the collection, um, but like elevating them, finding new ways to like work them into looks. Um, I love the play with the like f um, flowers turned into the floral bag and the hand pieces. The, I don't know, it was really beautiful. Like light, it was one of the my favorite collections so far. Yeah, and Virgil always puts emphasis, like so much importance on music. How was that? Yeah, you know, you, you and you felt it throughout the space. To have it outside and to still, I mean, you had the similar thing with Rick, but like to have the energy pumping through the show and just with the clothes, it made really great sense. Yeah. So we've got Gian to my right. What's that? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel now after seeing that? It's really good. I mean, it was a really an event. You know, they had a bounce house, Louis Vuitton branding. Uh, they had the cafe, the library. They were handing out these amazing zines. You're giving me a little iPhone. Uh, yeah, a little. You know, they had these custom benches, and they have mini versions of them, little fun-sized benches. Um, but the show itself was really good. You know, you had old Virgil meets new Virgil, and he's really got his codes down and uh, these sort of things that he's reusing as part of his theme. So, I mean, you had Evan Mock, one of the most stylish skaters out there. Of course, Lucian Clark, HS18 cover star, too. And then you had the kites implemented onto the clothing, too, which I thought was really sick, because the invite was actually a kite. And uh, I think it's a really good progression for him. And, you know, you, had, you asked Corey about the music. I mean, he closed with an orchestral version of Igor's theme, Batala, the creator. And, uh, you know, Benji B is the music director there, so, you know, what they're doing and building at this world of Vuitton is nothing short of amazing, especially, you know, Virgil being who he is, his team being who he is, and what it means for representation and creativity and, you know, defining what luxury looks like now. All right, man, so you just saw the Louis show. What'd you think? I did. It was gorgeous. Um, very Paris. It felt like a painting. I don't know, maybe that's cliche, but it really felt like a moving painting and the colors and uh, I, I don't even know if they properly, if it had rained, I don't know what would they have done. I kept thinking that, I was like, did they even think about that? But maybe it would have been cooler if it had rained. It was like that kind of a show, yeah. Any uh, favorite pieces? Um, the crazy like backpack thing was like, I don't know why I was drawn to that. Um, but yeah, that was maybe my favorite, just like the accessories. And also something that we're asking everyone, what do you think is really exciting about menswear right now? Uh, I don't know. I feel like there's like less and less rules, you know, being attached to everything. So um, even here, like the music choices, right? Like a band is playing like Tyler's music, a Louis Vuitton show. All of that's really exciting. And there's such a mix and there's the generations are like colliding. So that's like maybe my most exciting part. So thank you, man. Yeah, buddy. So we have some energy, energy like yeah. full on energy, like this is the real energy. This is where all the energy is at, it is Joe Holder in the place. In the flesh. How was it? Uh, it was great. I mean, Virgil always does unexpected things. The score was crazy. Uh, I'm pretty sure Benji was involved in that, which was nuts. Switching between classical and uh, hip hop was wild, but it was like the crispness of the music mixed with uh, who we had in there. Um, and the colors. And he, and he had a guy wearing a kite on the closing. And Tyler was in there. Hector, who I'm randomly friends with, soccer player, was in there. So it's always cool to see what he brings to the table. The boots uh, were pretty special. So he always has something up his pocket. And uh, he creates an environment that's like unprecedented. He got ice cream in there. He got LV benches, LV ashtrays. It's nuts. Tell me, you've been friends with Virgil for a while now, for a long time. Um, how did the relationship start and how have you seen him grow? Uh, so I became friends with Virgil when I started training him through Heron. Um, this is like right before I guess he kind of like blew up, especially all the Nike stuff, probably four or five years ago. 
And it was crazy to see because I remember one of the first ideas he had shown me that he wanted to do with Nike, they had like kind of turned it down low key. It was the stuff that like the Nike track and field collection we were going to Made in America one year. And it was wild because then last year or two years ago, then it came to life. And I actually led that workout experience in New York for him. But it's all, he's always grown like through during sessions, brainstorming like the 10 icons collection. But he's, he's so curious and like a kid, which is wild, which I don't think a lot of people like understand and, uh, and appreciate. So he's constantly on the come up, always has his finger on the pulse. He's a special dude. So you just checked out Louis Vuitton. How was it? was so good. Yeah. Uh, we already met uh, last year, yeah. last season, so I told you, year by years by years, and it's always the same. So everything about uh, details and uh, my, my five pieces uh, this time was, uh, was maybe uh, everything. Yeah, every, <laughs> everything. So you didn't exactly. have a five, you didn't have five pieces in No, no, five pieces, maybe, uh, no, 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 every trousers. Every trousers um, are like uh, white, white legs yeah. and best material, so no, no, I can choose, I can choose. All right, Matt, so what do you think of the show? Burge is the best. It, it gets better every season. Yeah. Love you, V. So you know how like every year Rick Owens has the best street style? The best, because he has such a cult following, so everyone just comes draped, it is looking always. like a gothic ninja goddess. A gothic ninja goddess. Yeah. Right? So we went and checked it out. Checked out those gothic ninja gods and goddesses. Peep these fits. Ben caught up with one of the hottest acts coming out of the UK right now, Octavian, to talk about his new mixtape and the artwork on his mixtape. Check it out. Octavian, hello. Hi, how you doing? Good, thank you. I feel like every time we cross paths, I have something to congratulate you on. It's mad. You're like taking over the world right now. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel like it's a, it's a process. And I feel like we're getting there, man, slowly. So you've just walked Louis Vuitton? Yeah, we just walked Louis Vuitton for the third time. It's good, I'm getting used to it. Yeah. yeah. As a kid, looking at you now, what would the young Octavian say? Because do you, do you feel like this is all kind of a bit of a dream? Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm very appreciative of where I am. And, but like, as a kid, I was always like this kind of like tunnel vision person. If I wanted something, I'll get it. And everything around wasn't really important, so it's like, right now I'm just like in this tunnel vision of, of my big dreams. And I'm always appreciative of what happens around, but I feel like the way to, to move fast, to move, to move um, efficiently, is to kind of focus on your goal and just kind of move towards that. It's kind of like climbing a mountain. I told Julie this the other day. If you're climbing a mountain, you just don't want to look back or sideways or you just look up. And that's, that's it, yeah. Speaking of doing everything, you pretty much are doing everything. You just come off the runway with Louis, then you played guitar, or you had a guitar debut. And then also Friday, you dropped Endorphins. Yeah. Congratulations, that mixtape is pretty epic. You. you feel it? I'm feeling it, man. I, I, was, I was a bit nervous to drop it because obviously, like, so different, like, each song. And I didn't want to lose any fans, and I was like, oh, no. Nah. I just released Bet, and then now I'm going to release a guitar song. So I was a bit nervous, but like, it's received pretty well, it's good. Obviously you've got Abba on there, you've got Skepta, you've got ASAP Ferg on there. Yeah man, it just came about, like, I was just in LA and, and I was just chilling and, and people kind of gravitated towards it. We didn't really ask anyone to be on it, so it's just like very natural and it's like sick. You didn't ask anyone to be on it? Not really, it's kind of like a gradual, like, it's not really like a planned thing like that. It's very gradual, you know what I'm saying? Like, people just gravitate towards the music if they like it. 
and obviously for the mixtape, you have this incredible artwork. Well, there's cameras still, but there's artwork all around the room. Um, there's this woman called Courtney. She used to work for basically uh, Givenchy. So she did the, like, the Watch the Throne cover. And like, do you remember Givenchy when they had the dog? Yes. She did that and like, she kind of, I kind of relate to her because she's kind of really dark, but yeah, happy, like the smileys and like, just kind of the sinister side of having like, sinister side of fun, you know what I'm saying? And tell me, this world of like, well, the world of music, the world of fashion, they're pretty much one right now. And I feel like Skepta was a big, yeah, what are your views? Um, yeah, Skepta was an icon, like he started off in the game like he was just doing music and then when he yeah, when he became very like fashion orientated I feel like he changed a lot of young boys lives do you know what I'm saying because like fashion is is a mad thing like it's all about being free and like being or feeling a part of something and before there wasn't really that there was like kind of like streetwear which was actual streetwear it wasn't actually like streetwear fashion do you know what I mean it was like track suits and that means you're a drug dealer do you know what I'm saying but now it's like it's given the kids like an opportunity to sort of break away from that and wear whatever you want and not be like, I don't know, labelled for anything. Especially for me, like when I was growing up, like I, was, I was looking at Skepta, I was looking at Skepta doing Shutdown and I was looking at the things he'd done with his fashion and it was great. I just think that it changed the whole of London and the way we see things a little bit. So for every kid like watching this and who is in complete awe of what you're doing, what advice would you give to them? I'm just saying just be free, you know, like, a lot of people just fall into this, like, a lot of people go into it, like, I need to do it a little bit like this guy, I just want to be, I want to sound a little bit like this, to be a, and then that's how music becomes samey, and I feel like that's happening in the UK, it's like, bare people are doing, oh, let me just go into, but you don't have to do that, you can just do your own music, you can be yourself, like, you don't even have to dress like anyone, you can just dress like yourself, whatever you like, or whatever you do. Dan, thank you so much and good luck for tonight. It's a thank pleasure you know. to chat to you. Thank you. Okay, so we're here at Lapierre. That's the right way to say it, isn't it? Um, with the Wonder Woman, Courtney MC, behind all of this incredible artwork. Tell me a little bit about the collaboration between yourself and Octavian. Well, he reached out to me when he was doing Bet. And, we, and he was like, can you interpret my music uh, visually? And he did that amazing music video with him and Michael Phantom and Skepta. And they had like the girls twerking with the, the bunny heads. And I was like, this is my world. So I did this like little cartoon for him. And then it took off from there. And uh, I did a lit for him. And then endorphins came around and they were like, let's just build a universe. So, and I think just speaking to him directly, we realized that we had so much in common in terms of like what our influence were, uh, were and like how um, our moods affect our art. So somehow like our inspirations were like, oh yeah, we referenced that, I referenced that too. So it just kind of, it worked perfectly. So I was speaking to him earlier and he said that he pretty much gave you full reign on the project, which probably feels incredible to you. It's the first time in my life that someone said to me, do whatever the F you want. And I felt so, you know, I felt it was like the perfect time in my life. I felt so liberated by that opportunity because, you know, working in art or fashion, people don't often do that. They want to control you and say to you like, oh, I'm going to change, it should be more like this. And so for someone to say, do whatever you want, it was honestly the, one of the most touching experiences. And then for us to talk about it afterwards and for him to be like, you've just put into art what my music represents, we were like, that's, it was really special. Right, coming up, our sneaker editor Chris Danforth went to Le Sentier. And he talked to the creative director of Salomon about the new collection and pretty much just the rise of the brand. Check it out. My name is JP Lalonde. Um, I've been working at Salomon for just about three years. Our collaboration with the Broken Arm started very intuitively. Uh, they actually came to Salomon asking for a very specific shoe. 
uh, that was destined for running in the snow. And sure enough, from that one request, it became a collaboration project. And this one collaboration project leaded to actually like a very great partnership with their team. And I'd also say at this point, it's more of a friendship than just a business relationship. And so yeah, working with the Broken Arm opened up so many doors, uh, namely working with Boris Bijan Saberi. Um, he's been a big supporter of our projects and also very, very strong collaborator. Uh, we've been working with him since, uh, well, the first project was released in spring 2017. And yeah, from there, there's a few more collaborators that have joined. So uh, more performance driven, we have Satisfy Running, uh, District Vision as well. We've released uh, Speed Cross with them. And just this season, going back into the fashion world, we have uh, Fumito Ganry, who's taken interest in our projects. Um, this is the start of a long-standing relationship. And we're also working with Anne Wander. So casual, technical, outdoors uh, apparel. Uh, absolute great collaborators. They've allowed us to push our interest in reflective materials to uh, a scope that's far beyond what we've been doing in the past and also a streetwear label called Avenir, uh, designed in collaboration between uh, Aurel San, who's a famous uh, French entertainer, and Sébastien Strapazon, a uh, Swiss designer. Uh, the way we choose collaborative partners is a very tricky one. Uh, we get requests pretty much every single week for a collaboration project. Uh, so ground rule is passion, uh, common passion for what we're doing and this has been guiding the decisions throughout the process um, and also this the ecosystem that we've been building is very diverse so Boris's universe is very different from what we'll find at the Broken Arm and also very different from what we see at uh, Avni, Anne Wander and even Ganryu's universe so all very different but yet complementary in a way. Why is the XT6 a highlight for the season? Well, there's two parts to it. Uh, one, this is where we instigated our advanced program a couple of seasons ago. Uh, and this is a sheer reflection of what Solomon Footwear is. It comes directly from performance, uh, loaded with different technical features. So uh, welded upper, dual density, uh, EVA for the bottom, and a very strong chassis for stability. So this is the very technical, rational side of things, but there's also the more uh, cultural argument to it. This one is made in collaboration with uh, Fumito Ganryu, and it's been an absolute pleasure working with their team. Very generous sort of time, very meticulous in their approach, um, and it has just been shown on the runway, and very looking forward to seeing it in stores. So day three is officially over now. Done, finito. Pretty good day, right? Really good day. Really hectic. You can tell it's starting to rev up now. What was your favorite look? My favorite look? Favorite sneaker of the day. Let's say favorite My sneaker. My favorite sneaker of the day? I just want a pair of Louis Vuitton sneakers that Virgil did. Honestly, any of them. Yeah? I need them all. Done. The all red ones? Serious. On me. On you? On me. On me. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. If you didn't like his outfit, let us know. If you didn't like my outfit, if you didn't let like me Ben's know. Ben's outfit, let her know as well. Yeah, I'll reassess my outfit decision. So, so yes, let us know if we are poorly dressed, and yeah. let us know what you like the most. And if we do things poorly, but if we do things great, also let us know what you love. We like to be loved, so send us some love in the comments below. <laughs>